our strength and our redeemer. Amen. Now I know some of you are probably wondering, it's August. Why did we have a stewardship reading? Right? Pastor's off his rocker. Stewardship is supposed to be um, end of October, beginning of November. Why are we doing this now? Well, it just so happens that the series we just ended was Ruth, right? So now we're starting a... I don't want to know if I want to tell you how many weeks because you won't show up then. That was funny. You're supposed to laugh. Come on. Right? We're going to do a three-week series on stewardship and generosity and look at what the Bible talks about, right? There's a few things this morning in our lesson that I think you really need to hear and we really need to think about. First of all, I'm not going to stand up here and tell you um, that I've got it all together and my finances are in perfect order and that everything is great and we give 10% and we never worry about how we're going to pay for something. Um, first of all, because my wife would fall out of the pew laughing um, and secondly, that would just be a lie. Because the truth is, we all worry about money, right? The, our text this morning, Jesus says to the people, don't worry about what's going to happen, right? Don't worry about tomorrow, because today's worries are enough for today. Don't worry about where you're going to get your food from, or don't worry about where you're going to get your clothing from, because the birds of the air don't, don't worry or toil. They don't even do anything, but God still makes them with splendidness, and they have a beauty to themselves. And the grass of the field that's going to be cut down today and thrown into the fire doesn't worry about how it's going to grow or how it's going to look. It just does what it's supposed to do. Right? So, there you go. That's what we're supposed to do. Don't worry about money. Is that easy? This, this means yes. This, this means no. Is it easy to not worry about money? No, it's not. It's not easy. Because when the... When the when your car breaks down and you finally get that one fixed and then you get in the other car and the check engine light comes on in that car and you're like, I just did this with that one. Now it's this one. Right? It's how things roll and we just worry about how we're going to take, make the ends meet and how things are going to happen. But here's to take a step back. Jesus says, store up your treasures where? In heaven, where moth and rust cannot come in and destroy. So store up your treasures in heaven. I've said this in here before, and you're going to hear it for the next three, two weeks after this week. If you show me your checkbook, I will show you what you treasure. Right? Who wants to do that? I'll show you mine too, so I mean, you know, I won't just make you show me yours and not share mine with you, because I already told you that mine's not the way that it should be, so, right? Jesus said that where your heart is, your treasure will be. Is that what Jesus said? I only have one person saying something. Jesus said, where your heart is, that is where your treasure will be, right? Yes or no? No. You see, that's what we think. We think, well, I have to go to church first and I have to get my heart right and I have to, be, I have to think about things and I have to make up my mind on where things are going to be. And that's not what Jesus said. Jesus said, where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Jesus doesn't say, come to me and figure out what I'm telling to you and get your life right with me and then everything's going to be good and your finances are going to be great. Jesus says, start to live a life like I've told you to live. And then your heart is going to follow. Right? I can guarantee you that my, as I said at the beginning, my finances are not where they need to be. But I can tell you in the moments of our lives when my family is actually giving the way that we're supposed to be giving, that things are much better and we are actually living as a group. You see my wife? We're living as a cohesive unit and things are right with God. And when we're not giving the way that we should be, things are not right and things go to pot. Because Jesus doesn't say you need to come and get your life right and then you're just going to magically start giving. He actually turns it around the other way and says, start giving, and that will turn your life around. Because the grass doesn't worry about what, how it's going to take care of itself. And the birds don't worry about how they're going to take care of themselves because they do what they were made to do. God made us 
to be in His image, to live as He lived, to love as He loved, to give as He has given. And what did He give to you? What did He give you? There's absolutely no wrong answer to this. He gave you freedom. He gave you grace. Some of you He blessed with children. Some of you He blessed with grandchildren. Some of you He blessed with wealth. Some of you He blessed with other things, right? So the question then is, is it wrong to be wealthy? I'm not going to answer that question. Because that's, that's not a good question. The question is, you've been blessed by God, what are you going to do with the blessings that you've been given, right? Because just like I showed the kids up here with the magnets, when you have the magnets the wrong way, right, they repulse each other. Just like in our lives, when we don't have things lined up correctly, things kind of push themselves apart, and we can't live the way that God has called us to live. But when we get things in the right order, they stick together. And it's kind of hard to pull them apart sometimes. I saw a wonderful uh, post on Facebook earlier this morning about um, sometimes I don't like myself for the decisions that I make and the things that I follow after. Right? That's the having your magnets. Oh, we got to make sure I have it the right way. You have your magnets the wrong way. When we don't have things lined up, when we're not focusing on where we need to focus. Right? Stewardship and generosity is more about focus in our lives than it is about us giving and worrying about not having enough. Because every time that I have given, even when I didn't think I had enough, there's always been enough. It's a weird thing about God's grace and how He provides for us. I'll leave you with one last thing. You keep your magnets the right way, right? So you don't repulse each other. But another great saying that I heard over the past couple weeks um, was supposedly said at a jazz festival, um, which I found quite interesting. The person said that, I always drink from my saucer. Why does he drink from his saucer? Because his cup is always overflowing. So live your life in such a way that you know that your cup is always going to be overflowing and that God is going to take care of you just like he does the birds of the air and the grass of the field. And drink from your saucer and make sure your magnets are facing the right direction so that your life doesn't repulse what God is trying to do with you. And live your life in such a way that God is always going to refill that cup because he's told us that's what he's going to do.